All right, they're already outside of the package because you know, One Piece. You know, it's a high priority. My Friday friend likes to watch it, so we did. So we got One Piece season 13, Voyage Two, with two discs. Well, I mean, I say two discs. Technically, it's four discs, two DVD and two Blu-ray. So part one, part two, volume one, or volume whatever you want to do it. Uncut episode, not edited episodes, 795 through 806. All right, and then uh, we also have Shining Post. No, Shine Post. I'll check it up real quick. I feel like there's still a little plastic there, but whatever. Let's look at the back of this real quick. Uh, I see Japanese and English subtitles, region A, 12 episodes on two discs. Looks potentially idolish. Maybe it's not, but not sure what to make of it. Hmm. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I guess it, the update just goes really fast if things are already opened. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Oof. Sorry. I, I'm brain farted there. Here's this week's anime DVD collection update. Well, that was definitely really weird. I don't know. For some reason, I'm feeling a little scattered brain tonight. So let's see if I can go through the list of everything real fast. Uh, so, hmm. now let's grab that from here since I do like the whole thing. So I did watch um, One Piece Season 13 Voyage 2. Um, <clears throat> I mostly remember feeling like the f first half of it was actually somewhat disappointing, but then it was okay for the second half, and I, I think there was just a lot of little things where it's just like, some of the combat felt like it was deliberately forced to go a certain way, and it wasn't doing anything great with it, so it felt like it was wasting time. Uh... But there was definitely more than just that. I, I, like, I okay, so the first three episodes happened, and I think not only did we get very little information, but there was a lot of the series just kind of dragging us along and not actually saying something, having people stutter and not actually say something. So it there was a mix of a couple of things that just made the first half of this a little... Uh, disappointing and I might be grumpy and bitchy and stuff like that so it might not have been that bad for people who are a fan of the series and watched it this far but I definitely felt that but then I felt like it picked up in the second half um <clears throat> like I know that some of the stuff they did in the first half is intentionally setting up the second half of what happened in here but uh, I don't know still felt that way and then I guess I put this here because I went ahead and watched Black Summer Season 1 I just watched it and it was a very entertaining rewatch. Um, <clears throat> maybe not the best isekai out there, I would say, but what some of the things that do work about it. First of all, it actually has a really good opening that just kind of gets you in the mood to kind of watch the next episode. It's like, you know, you could just fire up the next episode just because you know the opening is going to be there and you're going to enjoy it. Although, I found that actually going from episode to episode was fine. A lot of the buildup of our main character was just enjoyable. <clears throat> but I guess there's something about it that does feel a little empty watching all of it. Some of it is the way the season one ends is a little strange, I guess. Not bad, just strange. But all, like, like, like maybe, maybe it feels like it ends a little, maybe not abruptly or suddenly, but it does come to a kind of screeching end. Maybe not a screeching halt, but just a screeching end of the season, if that makes sense. And also, as it got later and later, it's sort of like, okay, our main character's group is building up, but <clears throat> I don't know. It sort of feels like they're not necessarily adding character to add a dynamic to the group so much as um, because I guess they're playing with ideas to a slight degree. Um, the way the characters interact is kind of nice because I guess um, while they do talk as if you know our main character is the main character and kind of the focus, 
it does sort of feel like they're slightly doing their own thing to a certain degree. I, I almost kind of feel like I may, may have had a problem with it before where it's like, oh yeah, they, um, um, I, I guess they spend too much time it about the series being him, I guess. Maybe not enough of them feeling independent characters. But definitely not the worst executed in that regard. It's just a thing. And I don't remember if I watched it as it aired or if I watched it all subtitled the first time. But I definitely watched it dubbed this time. And I sort of felt like sometimes the dub felt a little bit off. Maybe not horrible. But something about it felt off. And I don't really know what that is. If it's because I'm remembering maybe subtle thoughts from when I watched it. If I watched it subbed. Or, I don't know, maybe the emotions or the tones not quite feeling there. Which, it's hard to say how that compares to the subtitled version if I don't remember the subtitled version. But, that's thoughts. <clears throat> Helic Episode 5, um, entertaining episode. Uh, I guess the series is continuing to just be sort of fun with a sort of serious vibe going to it, but our main character kind of making it not feel oppressive in that regard. So I guess I'm just interested to see where it continues to go. Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts, episode 17. Uh, really good stuff, I would say. I'm enjoying um, kind of the main story stuff it's building. Reborn as a vending machine, I now wander the dungeon, episode 6. Strange episode, maybe not a bad episode. It's hard to tell because it definitely set up the next episode to be potentially different, but I'm not sure how different it will actually feel, but some of the stuff it did was just kind of it was stuff I suppose. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think how to describe it without spoiling too much stuff, but I guess I'm curious, but at the same time I'm not quite sure if I'm um hmm. I guess I'm not sure how I'm trying to put it. Undead Murder Farce Episode 6 um, okay episode, I would say. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if that one was the strongest for our main characters, but it does, it is kind of designed to push things along towards the story continuing. And it's a neat story. I'm not sure if it's, like, spectacular compared to a lot of stuff that felt like the show was doing up to this point per se, but it's really hard to say because it's the payoff that might make the determination for where it's going at in this point in the story. So, good enough. The Great Cleric, Episode 6. Um, I don't know. I guess it just kind of continues moving. Um, hard to say entirely what I feel about it because it almost feels like it's kind of been sort of stagnant story-wise to a certain degree. Like, maybe events that happened in this episode finally kind of, are kind of like, oh, yes, they've just been kind of leaning on that joke, kind of, but it's been sort of the joke for the past four episodes or something like that, so it's kind of like, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel like the show is building up as much, I suppose, as like other isekai. Not necessarily bad, but whatever. Um, the Most Heretical Last Boss Queen from Villainous to Savior, Episode 6. And I'm kind of assuming that I'm reading the episode, that I updated the episode numbers as I'm going down the list, and I might not have. So if I say it, I'm just like, oh, that wasn't the latest episode. Maybe I'm actually talking about the latest episode and my number is just bad. Uh, let's see. What all happened in this? I guess it didn't feel like... I think I mentioned before that it's felt like it's doing stuff based on the consequences of an episode that happened. I'm not sure if I remember which episode that is, if this one was still a part of that. I guess I'm the, 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 this specific episode didn't jump out as much, I guess, because I'm curious where it's about to go. Um, I guess that's one of the main things I can remember happening in there. And I don't know if I can talk about it, but it was neat. Maybe not the best episode that the series has, but definitely not something I'd call unwatchable. But maybe something that's... Maybe I'm waiting for something to happen, the next thing to happen, so to speak. We're on the Kitchen, 2023, episode 6. Okay, yeah, I guess just interesting Rurouni Kitchen stuff. 
not sure how else to describe it, especially how else to describe it quickly. Uh, Reign of the Seven Spellblades, Episode 6. I would say that it's... If there's anything good about this episode, it's that we're finally starting to get an idea of the title and the purpose of the show. And I would say that this episode finally felt kind of nice, whereas I, up till now it's been very watchable, but something that just doesn't make me motivated to start up the next episode. So, for people watching out there, it is very possible that you need to get halfway through this series or halfway through this season in order to get a real feel for the show, I think. It's possible. I'm not entirely sure, because again, I've only watched up to this point. But, yeah, make of that what you will. My unique skill makes me OP even at level 1, episode 6. Um, I'm trying to remember what specifically happened in the episode. I guess they started setting up some of that stuff. Some of it is a little weird. Maybe not exactly forced, per se. Yeah, and then that and that and that. But, um... I do have to say, it was one of... The preview at the very beginning of the episodes was probably one of the weaker ones I've seen, where it almost make, made me say, I don't care about half the stuff it's saying. In fact, it feels like it's advertising something that I don't feel like it's as great, per se. But, I don't know. Okay, episode, I think if you watch up to this point and you're enjoying it, you'll probably continue enjoying it. It's not the heavy hitter, I guess. Let's see, there's Am I Actually the Strongest? So, episode six... Got to late a week. Classroom, classroom for Heroes, episode six. Um, okay, episode. I guess I'm trying to think if this one felt particularly rushed compared to the previous couple, and I don't think it did. And I think it had material that maybe sort of feels like it's you know appropriate for this kind of story. So, in that regard, you know, it's okay, episode. Um, Jobless Reincarnation, Season 2, Episode 6. If there's any problem with the episode, I would say it's that I already want to be watching the next episode, but every episode seems to feel the same way. And I'm trying to think if there's anything I would comment about this episode. You know, there's neat, definitely neat little touches throughout it, but overall, kind of the last moment in it was definitely kind of impactful in a way. I'm not sure if I can describe it too much other than I'm like... Yeah, I don't know how I want to describe it without spoiling it for anybody that might not want to be spoiled, but I can just say that I felt very somber at the end of this episode and just kind of respectful for um, Rudius's, um the way he handled himself, I guess. Zom 100, Bucket List of the Dead, Episode 5. A fun episode. Um, what can I talk about? Like, it's definitely a little strange in that it's a little wilder, I suppose. Just a little bit wilder than I think we were used to up to this point. And I'm definitely starting to get other anime influencer vibes from this episode. Like, I think... I started getting that when certain animation made me think, hmm, could the people who worked on Gurren Lagann have been working on this? And there is at least one person. The person who did the musical score for Gurren Lagann has been doing the musical score for um, Zom 100, apparently. But I felt like there was also some animation, like some keyframes or in-between animation or something that felt like it, it reminiscent of Gurren Lagann. And at the same time, I also saw a comment that pointed out that the main character does kind of resemble um, My Hero Academia Deku to a bit. So, could be similar character designs from some of that. I don't really know. But I definitely got a lot of other anime vibes. And in good ways. Like, I enjoyed the episode itself. I don't think this one felt as emotionally gut-punching as a lot of the other episodes I talked about. But... It was definitely nice. Let's see, Dark Gathering, episode six. Um, I guess it's continuing to be kind of nice. Like, it doesn't feel like it's being one trick pony with all of its episodes, even though it's doing a kind of Ghost of the Week sort of thing. 
But like I said, up to this point, it's just been really nice that it feels like it's just a continuing story and not just a one-trick gimmick, I guess. Uh, Sweet Reincarnation, Episode 8. Interesting development stuff. Like I say, one of the things about this show that's actually really nice is it is a neat things building up and it's fun to watch our main character do stuff. Uh, I think we've only seen the first hints in the long time finally of, oh, well, maybe there's something here that's supposed to eventually lead to, oh, he's baking in another world. Maybe a couple things in this episode. But it's still... It's interesting because it's just not really there, even though it feels like it should be. And it's still entertaining despite not having it. And then finally, Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero, Episode 7. Uh, not as touching an episode as I would say the past handful have felt, but amusing enough. And I think importantly setting up stuff for story-related stuff to be able to continue happening. And I don't think it's too spoiler to say this, but it doesn't really involve our main two characters and the events that directly happened in this episode. What happens in the episode following up, I think, is interesting to wonder or ponder, but I think we'll have to see. Alright, and beyond all that, uh, is there anything else worth talking about? Just playing some Dead by Daylight, and I have fired up Pokemon mostly to reaccumulate, um, I guess, materials in preparation for potentially, um, so Mewtwo, so right now there's a Mew giveaway, and if you don't know about that, you should probably, and you want a Mew, you should probably log into your Pokemon Scarlet Violet, connect to the internet, it tells you the code to get it. I think that code is still valid for another month, maybe, but don't quote me on that, because the idea is they're giving away Mew because at the beginning of September, they're going to be, um, doing a Mewtwo, um, seven star raid and supposedly they're doing a lot of stuff to help prepare for that so there's Mew who I think is supposed to get some sort of buff of some sort in this special seven star and we don't know what that is we don't know what moves Mewtwo can have it will make a big fucking difference because Mewtwo is a legendary truck on steroids he hits really hard he's really fucking fast if, you're, if you assume, oh, he's only going to be a special attacker, um, you could get blindsided if he has physical attacks. So, like, even something like a Chansey or a Blissey, which might be able to take on some of his special hits without any resistances, even if they're around, if he has a physical fighting attack, your chance is going down because his attack stat is no joke. I mean, it's 110. It, it, for those of you that don't know base stat language in Pokemon... 110 is actually pretty good. Like, if it's 100, it's good, but if it starts going above 100, then it starts getting pretty good. It's not... I think 120, 115 maybe when stats start getting really great. But his attack is 110, which is very good. His special attack is 154, which is beyond great. It's motherfucking spectacular. And he's got good defensive stats. He's got some beef to him so he can take hits. So, this will be a question of what set actually does he actually have? What is the advantage that Mew has? And that, depending on the timing and stuff, you know, I've been intentionally keeping one of my accounts from logging uh, uh, you know, connecting to the internet to um, download stuff. I might get two Mews in case I need two Mews at the same time to take it on. I don't know. It's something that I guess we just have to prepare for. And the best preparation we can do is get the Muse to level um, 100 or get enough candy so that when you get a Muse, you can just instantly get him to level 100. Um, get vitamins so you can instantly train him in whatever stats you're going to put. Uh, all the mints so you can change the nature immediately. Um, probably materials to do TMs as well and f whatever. So, basically, oh, and of course, enough um, Terra Shards in order to change the Terra type. Basically, we just need to prepare for absolutely anything. Some of the thoughts people have are that Mew's probably going to make sense running um, Acid Spray, because Acid Spray is one of the best um, support moves in the game, period. 
the trick is, you know, if Mewtwo is hitting hard enough, do you need to have something that allows Mewtwo to take those hits quite a bit better? Do you need, like, life dues and light screens and stuff like that? And you probably want some sort of offensive move. It might make sense to hit it with a bunch of chilling water so that it just has no um, ability to do any damage. But, of course, you can't have all four of those things and expect to hit really, really, really hard. So, we're still having to figure this out. The only thing we know for certain is don't plan on bringing any berries as a held item. Because, um, assuming Mewtwo is like absolutely every single other 7-star raid out there, it'll come with its um, hidden ability. And its inability is on nerve, which prevents you from using your berries. So, don't bother. But, what am I doing to prepare? Yeah, like I said, gathering up materials. And that means I kind of am doing a AFK Ace Academy tournament farming. I've, I've spent money on some stuff, and I'll probably spend some money on some more stuff. I'm also making sure both my games have a good amount of Terra Shards. I think uh, they have enough to do any of the Terra types. I just want to also make sure they could do it twice. Because there's a very good chance I'm probably going to lose access to my infinite chances. Blissies. Infinite Blissies. You know, if, if I decide that that's what I need to do in order to take down Mewtwo. But, we'll see. Um, so that's pretty much what I'm up to. Weird update. It feels weird. Maybe it's because I'm, I actually put off recording this until pretty late for some reason. I don't know. I guess I feel weird this week. Y'all, have a nice one.